Hi, welcome back to Making a Difference. I have one of my favorite people in the world here today, and her name is Sarah Bottomley. And without further ado, Sarah, please tell us about your amazing experience in the Peace Corps. Thanks for having me on the show, Sherry. Um, recently, I just got back from the Peace Corps. I was in the Dominican Republic for just over two years. And um, I was living and working with the people there, doing um, health activities, development activities. And um, it was a wonderful experience, but I'm also really happy to be back. So, you know, most of us think of the Dominican Republic as a place you go on vacation and, and sunbathe and live in a luxurious hotel. Was that what your living experience was like? Share, please. So, I mean, obviously the tourism industry of the Dominican Republic did a great job, if um, that is, in fact, what people actually think of when you think of the DR. But um, the reality is quite different than that. I was um, stationed in a small rural agricultural community, only mm -hmm. about 80 homes. Um, Water, we only got running water about every three days. Electricity oh only my. about five hours a day. So it was very, um, very poor conditions. Mm -hmm. And I would say that by and large, that is um, a little bit closer to the true Dominican Republic. Really? So how about your bed? Like, was it nice mattresses, things like that? So um, after I moved <laughs> out of my host family's house, I uh, lived in my own home. Mm -hmm. And it was little like cement floor, um, wooden house, tin roof. Um, I bought a bed, like normal bed type things, but um, an outdoor latrine, mm -hmm. not like plumbing or anything. Right. Oh but it was great. You know, it was a simple lifestyle and I loved it. And most importantly, the people that I was surrounded by made it. Do they know, appreciate great. all the work you did? Um, I think so. I, it took a while at the beginning to kind of truly become integrated mm -hmm. and to form a trust that is so important to create a collaborative uh, relationship. And, uh, yeah, but kind of after a few months of living there and working there and seeing the same people every single day, yeah, we, we got to be very, very close. So what, tell us some of, about some of your projects. Okay, so um, my very first project was actually building latrines because there were several homes in my community that did not have bathrooms. Oh, no. Yeah, so um, we did that. I worked with a local community organization, and mm -hmm. we, um, we just built about 20 latrines mm -hmm. for families. Um, that was a huge issue, actually, because I was there when cholera hit. Oh my. There was a big cholera came to Haiti, right? and then shortly after, it came right into um, the DR. Oh, wow. And we actually had two cases in my community of cholera. Oh, my. So um, the latrines are incredibly important for yes. uh, hygiene and sanitation, especially in cases of cholera. Hmm. So um, I also trained health promoters, mm -hmm. local community women who wanted to make a difference in their community. Mm -hmm. I trained them on basic health promotion, right. nutrition, uh, maternal and child health, reproductive health, uh, hygiene, stuff like that. And nice. um, they went out into their communities and they kind of multiplied that information and certified homes as healthy homes. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Um, and you left that behind. That, that will I continue did. on. And that, yeah, and that's still functioning today. That was one of my biggest programs. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm happy to say that it's um, somewhat sustainable, mm -hmm. at least for now. Fingers crossed. Right. And, um, I worked with youth um, to be peer educators on sexual health in mm -hmm. their community, how to avoid HIV AIDS, oh, excellent. Um, avoid unwanted pregnancies, mm -hmm. things like that. I also built um, improved cook stoves because My this goodness. might sound kind of strange. It doesn't seem like you could get all that done in only two years. I know. Um, yeah, I was a busy girl, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it seems strange kind of improved cook stoves, but um, indoor air pollution is actually a very large problem in the developing world. Uh, you'll find in a lot of countries, not just the DR, that um, women will be cooking in kind of an open campfire right in their kitchen. Oh my gosh, so the carbon dioxide is just... Yeah, the smoke. I mean, you look at the roofs and it's just jet black, and you know that that's kind of what their lungs end up looking oh like after goodness. a few years. And the kids often are, are with their mothers in the kitchen while they're cooking. Oh, the so children. it, you know, uh, yeah, it impacts the kids and, and disproportionately the mothers as well. So asthma and cancer and, and yeah. oh my goodness. Yeah, huge problem. So, um, so we built these um, improved cook stoves. It was really fun, actually. How, how'd you do it? What'd you do? Um, you know, it was just fun thing. There were clay parts. Mm -hmm. It's incredibly... Um, very fuel efficient so that it was just people would just you kind of cut down trees and mm -hmm. use the uh, 
the firewood. So with this improved model, it actually only used one half of the of the wood. Very so nice. it um, improved deforestation, which was a big concern mm -hmm. in the community, and it cut down the uh, fumes completely. So basically, we just put in a little like chimney, just made out of tin, mm -hmm. that would take it outside. That's so, fabulous. Um, yeah. How do you know how to do any of these things? Did you did they, they come with a rule book? Yeah. Well, the Peace Corps actually provides some pretty good training they on do. programs like this, and um, there are people that kind of specialize in in things like that. So mm -hmm. I pulled them in to kind of train me mm -hmm. and my masons, Very nice. and um, you know. It's just kind of a process. Like when I came in, I I, I didn't know how to mix them in. I didn't know Surely. how to like dig a pit for a latrine and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And you just kind of learn how to do it and take that dive, and then you have a new skill at the end of and it. And you said your masons are these people who are villagers that work for you? Yeah, people in my community that um, were skilled, that knew how to mix cement, that had some basic masonry skills, mm -hmm. and then um, uh, yeah, we we work together in that. That's awesome. To build them. So, and yet, and they, so, so in that way, they help their community, but they were also um, getting an income from that. Right, which an income and pride their, in there. Right? Yeah, and which definitely helped their families. So you made a footprint there and surely made a difference. Any other projects that, you, that you'd like to share about? We have some pictures to show, too. Yeah, so I would say that probably the biggest physical project that I did in my Peace Corps service was I built a pedestrian bridge. I heard that just last night. Please tell us <laughs> how you did it. That, that to me is un. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. It sounds a little crazy, right? Because I was a public health major yes. in college. I don't really have any like engineering skills. <laughs> right. But it's it's really quite amazing what you can do if you just kind of read a lot, like mm -hmm. research a lot. So um, the very first time that I actually came to my community to work, to mm -hmm. live, I had my two huge bags. I was on a motorcycle taxi <laughs> going into my village. I'm going to take you of cars. Right. Yeah. You can't get to my community by car. You have to use a motorcycle. Right. It's very rural. And um, so anyway, I had a, arrived, it was pouring down rain. I had finally gotten pretty close to my community mm -hmm. and I re there was this big kind of ditch, like a, like a canyon almost, mm -hmm. and it was filled with rushing water, going super fast, super high, and I knew there was just no way that I was gonna be able to cross this. Oh my gosh. And I'm coming here to live, and right. I'm like, oh my God, like what am I getting myself into, right? So, um, you know, I turn around, I, I stay the night in, in the nearest town, and mm -hmm. then I come back the next day, and luckily the water was down. But I mean, from that very moment, I kind of realized what a huge problem this canyon was. Surely. Like, whenever it rains, no one can get in or out, and there's people waiting there until like 12, 1, 2 in the morning just on either cross. side just to cross. Oh my goodness, I mean, imagine a family could be split. Exactly, I kids can't go to school. I mean, if there's an emergency, they're it, out if, of luck, yeah, right? if someone needs to give birth, if there's a heart attack, if anything, oh, like they can't cross. Goodness. So um, throughout, I, I waited about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I was really talking with everyone, and it just repeatedly kept coming up in conversations. Mm -hmm. What a huge issue this was. So I finally, I um, talked to the community organization, and I was like, do you guys really want to do this? Like, mm -hmm. are, are we, it's not going to be easy, mm -hmm. you know? Bridges are not cheap. Right. We're going to have to get the funding, and mm -hmm. um, we're going to go off of volunteer labor. Are you guys ready? And they're like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, that's so amazing. Yeah, Sarah, so, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so it was really cool. It was exciting and fun to work um, with the community, and um, we had brigades. People showed up every single day. We had just Fabulous. so many workers. Um, different companies donated materials. How did uh, you, you, you get the donations and how did you get the engineering done? Um, just going and talking. I actually partnered with um, another volunteer, a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. who is a mechanical engineer. So mm -hmm. although not a civil engineer, still he knew yes. a few things about engineering. Mm -hmm. And uh, we both just read a lot and researched a lot. I know more than I ever wanted to know about That's cement so properties. Wild. You know? Yeah, so we built a pedestrian bridge that um, was for the construction standards of the states. So nice. um, it, did, did yes. you bring us pictures of the, of the bridge? Um, yeah, I did. So oh, good. So we'll show those. You should those. be able to see some. Yeah, and then we had a big inauguration at the end That's and exciting. invited everyone, the community, and anyone who was involved. And um, it was great. That is unbelievable. Would you, would you encourage people to get involved? I had an incredible experience in Peace Corps. Um, I can't, it was not easy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Peace Corps is not something that you do, you know, for an easy job. Sure. It's difficult, but it was by far the most fulfilling experience of my life. And I would say for anyone interested in Peace Corps, do your research, talk to a recruiter. And um, there's plenty of blogs online of current volunteers. It's a great way to learn about it. And I really just can't promote it enough. We have to take a break right now. So give me a moment. We'll be right back. I'm just be mad at me.
No, one, two, two. Because they well, have to know what pace Does that make sense first. at the end, though? Yeah, okay. I'll ask it right before the best part. Okay. I'm going to ask two questions, please. In 18 seconds? Not any more than 18 Maybe seconds. Maybe just one. Maybe the best Really? Roll tape, go when you're okay. Ready. I'll ask the best part of that if they don't make me stop. We're rolling tape. Sure. Okay. Go oh. Sarah, so what's the best part of the Peace Corps? Wow, that's a, a very loaded question, but absolutely the best part was feeling so integrated and accepted as part of the community, mm -hmm. and I felt like so many people's daughters and, and sisters and just like being an actual member of the community, that was something that I'll really carry with me for the rest of my life, and mm -hmm. I've made a Dominican family. I, I still Aww. keep in touch with them. I talk to them all the time, and, you know, it was just, it's wonderful to be accepted as a family. And you started some traditions, I know. You started a volleyball team, because I remember you contacted us back here in America, and you clothed them. That must have been so exciting. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I did a bunch of different projects. I got um, people back home stateside involved in as much mm -hmm. as I could to kind of um, create a cultural exchange. And, um, yeah. So if you can say one more thing about the Peace Corps, you know, what its philosophy is, or just... is an unforgettable experience that will change your life. Aww. You know, you come from a family that's always been involved in helping other people and you're carrying on the tradition. And you, I'm just so very proud.